This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Sai. <clears throat> thank you everyone for coming. Um, before we begin, I want to thank the Shul for hosting me for Shabbos, and especially the two Avis, Rabbi Hager, Rabbi Weiss, Rabbi Weiss, Rabbi Hager. You know the Gemara, the Rashi talks about sometimes it says Moshe before Aaron, and sometimes it says Aaron before Moshe, Lalamit Shishkul and him. So we want to thank both the Avis. Avi Hager called me many, many months ago, and we tried very hard to try to make this trip happen on a number of occasions. And then even Avi, Avi Weiss came to the shul, he was scouting it out, making sure that uh, everything would be, uh, uh, would be set up properly. And there were a lot of arrangements behind the scenes that were involved in making the trip hap- happen. So we want to thank um, both of them for all of their hard work and for uh, all their arrangements. Thank you so much. also want to thank uh, Shua Leibovitz, who also um, was part of the sponsorship. And uh, everyone who is Mishnatev, Rabban Shem Shri Mashpi on them, and Rabban Enoch Kimmelman, Shem Shri Mashpi on them, Shefa, Bracha V'Hatzlacha. Amen. So we want to speak about a halachic Indian that is Nagea, the Yom Tif of Shavuos. The truth is, you can't really think of too many halachic Inyanim that are Nagea specifically for Shavuos on a real halachic level. First of all, staying up all night, it's just, it's a minog, it's not, it's not halacha. B'chlal, uh, it's more of a recent phenomenon even. It's not, uh, not until the times of the Alshech and the Shem al it was not that popular. Well, what are you going to do? What are the, is there any halacha which is unique to Shavuos in terms of it being a Yom Tif? Is there anything unique to the Yom Tif of Shavuos? So I want to speak about an interesting Indian regarding uh, Yom Tif in general. This is more connected to the Nashim. And that is, women seem to have somewhat of a queer practice when it comes to Hadlakas Ner Yom Tif. We know when women light the, uh, sh- the candles Friday night, they say, Ner Shel Shabbos. When it comes to Yom Tif, they say, Lahadlik Ner Shel Yom Tif. And then when it comes to Yom Tif, the women do something which is slightly queer, maybe worse. And that is, they make a Shechianu. They say, Baruch Hashem, 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 Baruch Like we do on Yom Kippur, right? We come to Shul in the beginning of Yom Kippur, right after Kol Nidre. We start off, Shachiyonu v'kimonu v'giyonu l'azman hazeh. So why don't we do that every Yom Tif? The answer is really we should do it every Yom Tif. Why don't we? Because there's a rule, whenever you have a bracha that you could potentially be mesader ala kois, it's always preferable to mesader the bracha ala kois. So we wait until we have a cup. Well, I, why, why don't we do that on Yom Kippur? Because Yom Kippur can't eat. So there's no kois, so you make the Shachiyonu right away. <coughs> What do women do Yom Kippur? They also make a Shechion in the beginning of um, when they light the, the Nero. So the question is, why do women make a Shechion when they light the Nero? The same way men don't make a Shechion in the beginning of Yom Tif when they come to Shul because they postpone it until they have a Kois. So women should wait until Kedosh to, uh, to be Yoytzei Shechion from their husband because it's always preferable to be, make Brachos ala Kois. So it's so, somewhat strange that women are making the Shechion Um, when they light the Neros, who told them to do it? Who decided women should do it? Nobody told them to do it. Does it say in Shulchan Aruch they should do this? No. Is it brought down in any, any of the Noise Kalim? No. So why do they do it? They do it. Uh, that's a question on a lot of things people do. Why do they do it? I don't know why they do it. They just do it. For how long have they been doing it? So Rav Moshe writes in a tshuva, in our Chaim Chelek Dal Asim Kofalef, it's already hundreds of years that it's inexplicable why women are making Shechianu when they light Nerois Yom Tif. Ramosha says, The Hazem Meois B'Shanim Sh'anoshim Mavarches Man B'Shash Shemadlikin Es Haneros B'Yom Tif Even though, says Ramosha, it would have been preferable for them to wait to make the Shechianu Ala Kois, but they don't. Now Ramosha doesn't say, I'm going to be Mavato what they do. Ramosha doesn't say, I'm being Moicha on what they do. Ramosha is just reporting the facts. The facts are, women are making Shechianu when they light the Neroys, and it would have been better if they didn't. But Moshe is not saying, I'm going to stop them, he's just pointing out the reality. This is what they do, and it's not really great. Fine. 
comes Rabbi Yaakov Emden in the Shalsa Tshuvas Shelas Yaivitz, and the reason why he calls it Shelas Yaivitz, Yaivitz, of course, is Rabbi Yaakov Emden's name, Yaakov Ben Tzvi, Shelas Yaivitz. And Rabbi Yaakov Emden got a letter from someone. By the way, if you take a look, it's in Chelek Aleph Sim Kov Zayin. It's just Kedai to see some of the Rosh Tevois that Rabbi Yaakov Emden points out. He says, Sholoim Ahuvi Yedidi Hagvir. So here you see, if somebody's rich, they get a title. The wealthy man, Shin Yud. Anyone know what Shin Yud stands for? Sholoim Cha Yiska, your peace should flourish. Aleph Dalet Shin. Achar Drishas Shloimoi. Gimel Yud Hey. Galile Yadav Hatahirais. That was a compliment. Back in the day, you know, these were good. Your, your hands, Galile Yadav Hatahirais, your, your, the poles of the, your holy hands. So Ryakov Emden says, I got Nachas from your letter. Shin Ches. What does Shin Ches stand for? Shelas Chacham. So your question was a smart question. And says Ryakov Emden, first let's start it as follows. The truth is, we need to be ma'arer, we need to be moicha on the minog of women, that they make shechionu when they light the candles. And your taina is very good. Number one, the first taina, you'll say, what's wrong with what women are doing? Is there something wrong with it? Is there something wrong with it? That's what they do. What could be wrong? You know what's wrong with it? It's not brought in the paiskim. It's not brought in the paiskim. That's what's wrong. And that's an eye-opening thing. People ask me all the time, you know, I want to do this segula. What, I'm going to stand on my head? Somebody told me to do it. What, what could be wrong? Well, what could be wrong? What's wrong is it's not in the Shulchan Aruch. If it's not in the Shulchan Aruch, it's wrong. We don't do things. We don't, we, I'm doing it. Why? Because I heard my, my grandmother's third cousin told uh, Yenta Fefa that if I do X, Y, and Z, it's going to be a segula. What could be wrong? What could be wrong is it's not in the Shulchan Aruch. If it's not in the Shulchan Aruch, you want it, you're a different religion, you can do whatever you want. In Judaism, we follow Shulchan Aruch. That's the first Taina, Rabbi Yaakov Emden. Sorry. Second Taina. Second Taina says Rabbi Yaakov Emden. Says, says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, a very interesting thing. When you build the sukkah, could you make a shechianu? The Gemara says that technically you can make a shechianu when you build the sukkah. So why don't we make a shechianu when we build the sukkah? Because we choose to juxtapose it ala kais. We choose to make the shachiyonu ala kais. It's always preferable to make shachiyonu ala kais. And therefore, says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, when it comes to shachiyonu on Yom Tif, it would be preferable for women not to make shachiyonu when they light the candles, but rather to make shachiyonu ala kais. Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, in my entire life, from the moment Rabbi Yisham kicked some seichel into my brain, miyoyim amdi al daiti hayadavar tamua be'enai, and I wanted to protest against my wife. And I'll tell you, if there was anyone in history, if there was anyone in history who saw something that he didn't think was mamish emes la'amito and had the guts to speak out against it, there is no question that individual would be Rabbi Yaakov Emden. The man had a printing press in his house. And the moment he saw something that he didn't like, he would publish, you know, a, um, a billboard, he would publish a sign, and the, it would be Moicha. Rabbi Agendon was perhaps the most outspoken Gadol in the history of Klal Yisrael. By the way, if anybody wants to come, July 22nd, we're going to Germany, we're going to go to the farm of Rabbi Yaakov Emden, Rabbi Yenison Ibishit, Sapnei Yeshua. Okay. You're welcome to join us. But... Not sponsored. No, I'm not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Other Rabbi, let's get him to sponsor. What? If we can get him to sponsor. No, if you come, we'll sponsor breakfast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're in. But what? I don't say, what is the what is the whole big Davis, problem? Yeah. Right. The first mitzvah that a man does on Yom Tif is alakais, so he makes shechianu. The first mitzvah that a woman's doing, she's doing a neiris, so the first she makes shechianu. But it's not brought down. It's out the first mitzvah. Okay. See, right? There's no, there's nothing wrong. There's no iser. There's no problem. I'm it just makes sense that way. Okay, right. It, there's a, there's a svara why they juxtapose it to a mitzvah because this is the beginning. This also this is how they're makabel yomtiv b'maisa, as opposed to a, a man has not performed any maisa to be makabel the yomtiv, so he'll do it ala kais. But in general, we like to juxtapose uh, mitzvahs to the kais. For instance, on sukkahs. On Sukkot, when do we make a Leishev HaSukkah? We make a Leishev HaSukkah in the Kiddush. Does a woman make a Leishev HaSukkah? Lahadlik Ner Shal Yom Tif Leishev HaSukkah? She doesn't do that. 
Why not? She's lighting in the sukkah. So why doesn't she make a lay shave? Because we do it a la kais. So if you do it a la kais, so why, why is the woman not waiting for her shachiyonah to do it a la kais? So says Rabbi Yaakov, Emden miyoyim, omdi al daiti, I wanted to protest against my wife. However, lo yasisi maisa, I didn't do anything. And I let her do her thing. Why? Because ki be'emes chashash brachal v'atola inkan. There's no brachal v'atola. There's no brachal Imagine the following scenario. The husband makes Kiddush, the husband makes Shekhyonu, and when the husband finishes Shekhyonu, the woman gets up. She says, Baruch Atah Hashem, Lechem Olam, Shekhyonu, V'kimonu, V'yonu, L'azman Azah. Is it a bracha levatala or is it not a bracha levatala? It's not. She, he says, what are you doing? She says, I had a mind not to be with you. Is she allowed to do that? Of course she's allowed to. So to have the woman make a Shekhyonu when she lights the Neroist, there's no problem. It's not a bracha levatala. She, by the way, if she wanted, let's say a woman said, I'm not lighting Ner Yom Tif this week. By the way, it's an interesting halacha. What's halacha? If a woman forgets to light Ner Shabbos one week, she has to light another calendar the rest of her life. <coughs> What's halacha if a woman forgets to light Ner Yom Tif one week? Zachreinim say, we don't kenas her. It's a milsa de shricha, and we're not going to kenas her. Well, it's not a common thing for her to forget. You know why? Because if she doesn't remember before Yom Tif, her husband's going to come home and say, What'd you do? Oh, I forgot. And then she'll light then. So it's very uncommon for a woman to forget Yom Tif. But Mela, since it's uncommon, the Chacham are not goyzer. But let's say a woman said, I'm not lighting near uh, Yom Tif this week. Could she make a Shekhyonu at the beginning of Yom Tif? Avada, she can make a Shekhyonu. So since she can make a Shekhyonu at any time, the halach is you'll even allow to make a Shekhyonu Bashuk. But it's preferable to make it ala kaisa, says Rabbi Yaakov. And then, therefore, if a woman wants to make the shachiyana when she lights the neiros, says Rabbi Yaakov, and then I might be the most outspoken person in, in history. And we know Rabbi Yaakov Emden spoke out against many, many gedoy le'olam. But he wouldn't speak out against his wife. <laughs> okay? So he said, I'm going to let her be. I'm going to let her be. Because, look, if she did it, she saw it in her father's house. And her father was a big guy. Even though I have no idea why the Shver let this bad minah g- continue. But, uh, you know, it, it's not the end of the world. And therefore, Rabbi Yaakov Emden said, I'm not going to speak out. I'm going to let it be. But, says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, let's say a woman is a balas tshuva. Or let's say you're g- starting a new community. The woman should not make the shechiyano. If this is her minog, let it be. If the woman has no minog, then she shouldn't do it. She should do the correct thing, which is, she should be Yoytzei Shechiyanu with her husband. That's the Psaq of Yaakov Emden. I don't know if everybody agrees with that, but says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, in a new community, do not allow this minog to take root. In a community that already has the custom, we could allow it to continue. Okay, so that's step one. Step two. But if it's not in Shulchan Aruch, what are they doing? They heard it from their third cousin, Tafiyyantin. You're right, but there, there's a... You're right. Where did they get it from? So, uh, the, the answer is, I would say it's not Menog Yisrael, exactly. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky writes in Emes Yaakov that the Prokim in Tanakh, you know who made up Prokim in Tanakh? Um, the King James edition of the Bible. It's not a Jewish origin, it's Christian origin. And he even has kashas that sometimes a parsha ends after Pasuk Aleph, and the next parsha begins Pasuk Beis. So Rabbi Yaakov um, writes, yasher avatline. If I would be strong enough, I would be mevatel prakim. So why isn't he mevatel it? It's not a minog Yisrael, it's a minog Akam. The answer is to change things in Judaism, you've got to be very strong. Even Rabbi Moshe himself has, uh, did not say he's going to change it. He's just reporting about the facts. He says the facts are not really co- are correct. It's not a good practice. But still, not every Chacham has uh, the strength to be Mavato, something that's transpiring. We sort of let things go. It's, uh, in Judaism, we, we're very reluctant to make changes. We're very reluctant to make changes. So now, the, here's the next step. So the woman made a Shachianu. Now, let's say the woman's an Amana, a Grusha, single woman. It comes time to make Kiddush. Sari, Marna, Rabbi, Sai, Borogada, Borehe, Priyagofen. Right? And she says Kiddush. Does she say Shekhyonu again by Kiddush? Should a woman who makes Kiddush say Shekhyonu? Again? Again. Oh, that is Why? Should she say Shekhyonu again? Why should she? Of course not. What would you call a woman who makes a Shekhyonu again in her Kiddush? What did she do? It's Bragla Tola, Avada. So comes with Shomazam and Orbach. 
Hine number three. Min bircha isha shachira alakas and neiros moed yom. Nira she ain lo levar sheinus. She already yotze. Elamai, it's bad enough she did it at the wrong time. That's a halbat zara. But now she's going to do it again. Of course she shouldn't do it again. But perhaps she might see her kids with the kids. That's a different story. But if she's by herself, she can't do it again. Step three. So now the woman made shachianu in her halakas neiros. Yeah, and her husband comes home. And the husband says, Right? Should she answer Amen? Should the woman answer Amen to her husband Shachianu? L'chayra, Pashas, you would say, she's not allowed to answer Amen. Why? Well, I have a kasha. What's halacha if in the middle of Kiddush you hear somebody come out of the restroom and say, Baruch Ato Hashem? Roife kolbosor umafli laasais. You allowed to answer a main if you're being middle being yotzi the kiddush. I vow that you're not allowed to. You're not to answer. I mean, it's a have sake. Let's say you hear a guy or say a random. He sees lightning and he says shekoychul gvarasay malei You allowed to answer a main if you're middle of hearing kiddush. I vow that not. Let's say you hear a guy. He sees chveis the gadol adar. He sees abcham kiyevsi and he says shecholak mikvayda lireya mechachmas lireya. You make a main. Of course, you can't answer a main. So says Rav Sternbach. The same way you can't answer Amen to a random bracha, you cannot answer Amen to your husband's Shekhyonu. Why? Because you don't need a Shekhyonu. You're already Yotze Shekhyonu. Elamai, your husband needs a Shekhyonu, good for him. But for me, his Shekhyonu is a random bracha. You may not answer Amen to his bracha. That's is, what it was. Isn't that like the Kiddush now? They're almost not going to part of the Kiddush. So maybe then you're allowed to. But the, the proof they were, were they Misakin? Were they Misakin as part of Kiddush? Yeah, but how, what if the woman was making Kiddush? She wouldn't be allowed to say the Shekhyonu. So you see, it's not Mamish, an integral part of the Kiddush. So um, Rav Sternbuch writes in his Haggadah, if you look at number four, Noshim Shekfar Amru Shekhyonu Bahalakas Neiroiz, Lo Yomru Achshav Oidapam, they can't say it, Amen. Dava Brach Levatala, that we got. They're not to answer. Maybe for them it would be a hefsik. Wow. And Rav Sturmbach repeats himself in the Mayad Mizmanim. Really, they shouldn't answer. Let's take it, take it a step further. Maybe a woman who has this bad custom of saying Shachianu when she lights the Neirois cannot be Yoytse Kiddush through her husband. Why can't she be Yoytse? Kiddush to her husband, because for her, what's the halacha? Is interesting halacha. Person Moshman Esrei, and the chazan is in the middle of kedusha, and the chazan says kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. What do you do if you're Moshman Esrei? Stop. Right. So I call it stop, drop, and listen. Right. So this, Rashi Shita is stop, drop, and listen. Shoimeya You stop, you drop, and you listen. I so Toisvus asks on Rashi, Miman of Shach, does Shemeya Koina work or does Shemeya Koina not work? If Shemeya Koina works, then it's a hefsik, you know how to stop. And if Shemeya Koina doesn't work, how does it help to stop? So Toisvus says, just continue davening and go on your merry way. Wow. That's, that's what Rashi, Ra, so Rashi mm. says, stop, drop, and listen. Toisvus says, don't stop, drop, and listen. Rashi. Says Toisvus, the minog is to be makel b'dieve to stop, drop, and listen. Does that mean you can still continue if you want? Let's push pause. Not sure. Well, if you're saying you're Mako, might as well be Mako like Toysus and, and hold like Rashi. You mean, you, if I want, can I continue you're, davening? You're in the middle of a bracha, I just want to ask Ray. Could I, am I allowed to continue davening? You shouldn't finish your bracha and you should listen or just continue? No, L'chayra, Toysus says we're Mako to stop and listen and be Yotzi that way. But the hard see, Ritzi Pesach Frank says, what do we see from here? We see from here that really lichat chilo, you should be choyshesh for toysus. That means shemeh koina really is a hefsek. It's just since you're Milosh Manesu, you have no etza, so you have to stop, drop, and listen. But l'mashal, let's say a person's in the middle of putting on tefillin, and he knows that if he puts on tefillin right now, he's going to end up hearing kedusha between tefillin shal yad and tefillin shal rosh. So avada, if you already put on the tefillin shal yad, and now you're hearing kedusha between the tefillin shal yad and tefillin shal rosh, you could be soy mechan rashi and stop, drop, and listen, and you'll be yotzei kedusha and won't be a hefsek. But should I put myself in a matzav where I'm going to put on the tefillin shal yad and have to rely on my shemeya koina between the tefillin shal yad and tefillin shal rosh? But according to Toysus, it's a hefsek. Avada, I can't start putting on the tefillin. I have to be choyshish for shishat 
Tosis. It's reason like in the mitzvah. You don't want to stop. Once the door rises, once the door abana, you want to. You want to. Yeah, but I'm going to lose out kedusha, and if I, and I'm going to put myself in a matzav where my kedusha is going to be possibly a hefsek. So then we say, if mitzvah, mitzvah bal yadcha, literally yadcha al tach mitzana. That's when also that's when I'm waiting because the stama I have nothing better to do. But here I'm waiting because I want to get another chap another mitzvah. So. Under these circumstances, we say like this. If, if I put on Matfon Shalyad and I happen to hear Kedusha, then I'm going to stop, drop, and listen. But I'm not allowed to put on my Tfon Shalyad if I'm, going to, if I'm going to put myself in a matzav where I'm going to have to hear the Kedusha between Tfon Shalyad and Tfon Shalroish. So therefore, says with Tzvi Pesach Frank, it comes out that for a woman who, makes, who has this bad custom to say Shachiyonu al Hanerois, she can't be Yotze Kiddush from her husband. Why? Because I have a question. Let's say you know that the guy who's going to make Kiddush for you, he's going to say, Mekadesh Yisrael v'hazmanim, and he's going to say, Asher Yatsar, and then he's going to drink. This guy has an obsession with Asher Yatsar. <laughs> and he's going to say an Asher Yatsar between the Kiddush and drinking. Are you allowed to be Yotze with him? You're not allowed to be Yotze with him. You're not. It's a Hefzik. Asher Yatsar is a Hefzik between Kiddush and the Shtia. So Legabe the woman, the man's Shachianu is a Hefzik for her. So she can't be Yoitse with his Kiddush. Wow. Says Utsi Vesach Frank, Yom Tif night, the woman will have to make her own Kiddush. Wow. Why? Can you just say the bracha and then you can drink and then you can say Shafiyana? I mean, she'll drink before him. No, he's, he needs to drink. <laughs> From he what has, cup? He's holding the kais. She can't have Kabbalah not to be Yoitse? Ah, says Utsi Pesach Frank, <coughs> maybe when does Toysva say Shemea Ka'ina is a half-sick? That's if you need to be yoytze with the Kedush, and I need to listen and be yoytze. So if I need it, then it's like I said it. But what if I, I say, I don't want to be shoymei ha'koyna. I don't want to be yoytze with your shachiyana. So Toysus says, and just continue, you can continue. No, so Toysus says, ignore the whole thing, just continue on your merry way. But what if I'm listening, so the woman is sitting there, she's listening. But it could be, Rotsi Pesach Rana says, says that Toysus would only say shoymei ha'koyna is a hefzik if I need to listen. What if I choose not to be yoytze? Right, or she could not listen. Right. She could not listen. No, no, no. Lega- okay, so then it's still possibly a problem because Legabe, her, he said He's something, but, that, but the answer is he needs to say it. So, so regarding her, she's not listening, and regarding him, he needs to say it. So she still needs to push too. Right. Okay, so the, the, the upshot is, Sri Pesavan does not say she can't be Yoitse, but he does have that possibility. I'm just bringing out how complicated this, this custom of women is. Because her making the Shechianu now puts her whole Kiddush in jeopardy. So again, Rav Sternbach holds, can she answer Amen? No. Right? Rav Yid, what's your, what's your name? Yeah. yeah. Rav Yossi, you understand what Rav Sternbach is saying? Rav Sternbach is saying you can't answer Amen. Right? Fine. Comes with Moshe Feinstein and they grace Moshe. It's good for business. Chelak <laughs> Archaim. <laughs> what? <laughs> JP Warehouse. JP Warehouse. This commercial is brought to you by JP Warehousing. Well, but that's going to cost you. Okay, fine. So, so, um, the Rav Moshe and the Tshuva and Chelak Archaim, Chelak Dalit, Simon Kofalif. Rav Moshe disagrees with Rosh He doesn't quote Rosh by name. Rav Moshe says, Avada and Avada, the woman is allowed to answer Amin. Okay, now listen carefully. Why is the woman allowed to answer Amin? The reason the woman is allowed to answer Amin is because if a woman would not be allowed to answer Amin to her husband's Shechianu, then Rabbi Yaakov Emdin should have told his wife, Dear, you cannot be noyek to make Shechianu when you light the candles. Because how could you make the Shechianu? Then you, you're going to forget, you're going to answer Amen. And if you answer Amen, it's going to be a hefzik. So this, this bad custom of yours is going to put you in a matzav where you're going to forget and you're going to answer Amen. And it's going to be a hefzik and a, you're not going to be to the Kiddush. Says Rav Moshe, if the woman wasn't allowed to answer Amen, then Rav Yaakov Emden should have protested against his wife. Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, so why, why? Maybe there's a better Eitzah. Just tell her and remind her, dear, you can't answer Amen. Says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, women are not going to listen. Uh, says Rabbi no, who's going to listen to you? Your wife's going to listen to you? You're going to tell her, don't answer Amen. The likelihood of her remembering not to answer Amen is nil. There's no chance in the world. You could tell her three seconds before, don't answer Amen. Amen. I just told, oh, I forgot. Says Rabbi there's no, if Rabbi Yaakov Emden 
hell, uh, excuse me, if a woman was not allowed to answer Amen, then Rabbi Yaakov Emden should have been mevatel, this bad practice, because it's going to put a woman in a situation where she's going to answer Amen, it's going to be hefsek. Ella might tell her not to, she's not going to remember. And then says Rabbi Yaakov Emden, and even if she would remember, you're not allowed to put someone in a matzav where they can't answer Amen. <laughs> Why? Because there's a chiv gadol to answer Amen. So to, to have a minag where the woman's going to say Shachianu before, and then she's going to be strapped that she can't answer Amen to her husband's Shachianu, now this minog is putting somebody in a matzav where they're not to answer Amen. There's a chiv gadol to answer Amen, and you're not allowed to be noyeg practices where force people not to answer Amen. How do you know there's a chiv not to, to answer Amen to a bracha? Because the halacha states, that if you hear children saying and practicing brachas in front of their Rebbe, you don't have to answer Amen, the Shulchan Aruch says. That implies that in every other matzav, you do have to answer Amen. It's a chiv to answer Amen. So if there's a chiv to answer Amen, says Ramosha, you're not allowed to put someone in a, in a matzav where they won't be able to answer Amen. So says Rav Moshe, I understand that Rabbi Yaakov Emden didn't want to shake the boat, but he needed to shake the boat, because this minog of Noshim, to say Shechion when they light the Neirois, is putting women in a situation where when their husbands make Kiddush, they're not going to answer Amen, and you're not allowed to be noyega practice that you're strapped and you can't answer Amen. But says Rav Moshe, still, let's try to understand, what's the svara? why Amen is not a hefsek? Why isn't Amin a hefsek? L'chayra, she doesn't need a shachianu. And legabe her, his shachianu is an extraneous bracha. And her Amin is like saying Amin to someone's Asher Yatzar. So why is she allowed to answer Amin? So Amish says a beautiful svar. The Ramah writes in Simon Kuf Samach Zayin. Interesting halacha that we're, we're not knowing this way and it's not the halacha. I make Kiddush. And I might see everybody on the table. So I make Bari Pri Hagafen. Or let's say better, better yet, I'm making hamoitzi. I say hamoitzi lechem in aretz. I eat a morsel. You didn't eat yet. Could you talk? Yes. No? You hear? A regular Shabbos, no. right? I'm no. the balabas. No, no. I make hamoitzi and I eat, but you didn't eat yet. Are you allowed to be mapsik? No. no, the Ramah says, yeah. We don't hold that way. We don't hold that way. But the Ramah says, um, we do. We're, we're, we're machmir. But the Ramah says, once the boitzea eats, everyone else could be mafsik. And then after the mafsik, they could eat. Again, you're being moitzi me with my hamoitzi. But so if it's like I said hamoitzi, I can't, I can't, uh, in other words, I'm, I say hamoitzi. I, I'm, say, I, I'm saying hamoitzi for you. So I'm eating, but you have to eat. So the reason why we're machmer is as follows. Because you can't be better than me. If I would talk before I eat, I wouldn't be yoitze. So you can't talk before you eat. But there are more paskins that once the balabayas eats, everyone else could talk. What's the pshat in the Ramah? Says Ramosha, the pshat in the Ramah is that when somebody is being moitzi others, everybody becomes tafel and like an evid and secondary to the, to the mevarech. And once the Mavarech's bracha was chal, we don't care what anybody else does. Everybody else is secondary. So once the Mavarech made the bracha, and ate the hamoitzi, and his bracha was chal, then I could schmooze about the chves, uh, LA sports, and then you could, and then you could eat. I, but you, didn't, you don't have a hamoitzi. Because the, he said a hamoitzi, then you talked, and then you ate. No. My hamoitzi is good, because I'm tofel to the balabayas. I'm tofel to the ikar bracha. Why are we machmir? Because I can't be better than you. And if you would talk in between the hamoitzi and the achila, it wouldn't be good, so it's not good for me either. But the Ramah holds, the Ramah holds that it works. It says Ramosha, we see from here, that when it comes to being yoytzei brachos, the ikr is the balabayas, everybody else is tafel. It says Ramosha, legabe shachianu, since regarding the balabayas, the shachianu is critical and important and needed, even though it's not critical and important and needed for everybody else sitting around the table because the woman already made shachianu when she lit the candles, but it's not a hefsik for her. Because since it's not a hefsik for the balabayas, the woman becomes tafel to the balabayas. What That's about her. Amen? And therefore she could answer Amen. Why? 
Because since Legabe him it's needed, since Legabe the Balabais it's needed, so she becomes like a Eved to the Balabais, and she can answer Amen, even though Legabe her it's not needed. That's the story of Rav Moshe. And Rav Shlomo Zalman agrees for a different reason, but Rav Shlomo Zalman says that a woman, Lamaisa, could answer Amen. And by the way, there's a lot of confusion. I know in a lot of homes a woman doesn't answer Amen. Lamaisa, it's not the halacha. We go like Rav Moshe and Rav Shlomo Zalman, that the woman could answer Amen. So you have two extremes. Rav Sternbuch says Amen is a half stick. If you say Amen, maybe you're jeopardizing the, the Kiddush. Rav Moshe says she should answer Amen. The Kiddush, the sort of the Chap of the Shir, is the, the Psak of the Shevet HaLevi. That's why I'm giving the Shir. It's Nagei Shavuos. Anyone here have a minig like Rav Sternbach that the woman doesn't answer Amen? Nobody's going to... Yeah? So now you'll change. But even if it's your min, Even if it is your minig... My Shver's not that way. What? My Shver's not that way. And whole change also, Rav Sternbach. First, he doesn't have a minig. Oh, he doesn't have a Sternbach? Forget it. Okay. <laughs> no. Why does he have to change? Here we uh, go. Well, that's why? Okay. I'm telling you, Rav Moshe Shomazam. It's good anyway, it's not okay. Because Mutzah Shabbos, so you can, you can light later. You have to light later. Oh, good. Right. So, so if she's lighting right before, right before Kiddush, so you might as well not say Sheikh because you're going to hear it right now. Right. I mean, you're pointing a very nice Ha'ara. <coughs> that the, the whole, the whole it, it becomes a very questionable minog this year when she's lighting Mamish right before the Suda. So the husband's about to say the Sheikh No, I have to say Sheikh on, on the Neiros because that's the minog. Not a minog. This is what you do. Okay. But I want to tell you a very nice chap. So why don't you do like that? Just, I mean, this year? The lady shouldn't light if Rabbi Yaakov Emden did not, was not Mavatel the Minog, then you know, I'm not here to be Mavatel any uh, practice. One last chap. Listen to this chap. One last chap. Well, one last chap. Ready? It's like this. Says, um, I, I want to I tell you a nice Dvar Torah on for Shavuos. Uh, two more minutes. It's like this. The Yom Tif of Shavuos is called what? What's Shavuos called? We call Zman Matan Tarasenu. What do we call in the Chomesh? Kurim. Chag Abikurim. We, so we, we, and we call it Chag um, Shavuos. And in the Mishnayis, we give it a different name. We call it Atzeras. So there's a question. In the Chomesh, there are only two days called Atzeras. Shemini Atzeras, and sometimes the last day of Pesach. Will, will Shavuos ever be called Atzeras in the Chomesh? Never called Atzeras in the Chomesh. In the Mishnah, it's called Atzeras. Why? What's the pshat? Why in the Chumash is Shavuos not called Atzeres? And in the Mishnah it is called Atzeres. So Bichesko Abramsky says a beautiful idea. Very gishmak idea. He says, what does Atzeres mean? Isser Malacha. Atzer Mi Malacha. Why do we call the last day of Sukkot Atzeres? You know why? Because every other Yom Tif has a good name. Because we have mitzvahs to do. On Rosh you blow a shoifer. On, on Sukkot, you sit in the Sukkah. On Pesach, you eat matzah. What do you do on Shemini Atzeres, Midoy Raisa? Nothing! So how is it a Yom Tif? It's Atzeres, it's a Yom Tif, because you now do Malacha. Whenever you have a day that the only distinguishing feature is, you now do Malacha, we call it Atzeres. The last day of Pesach also, sometimes called Atzeres, because there's no specific mitzvah. Shavuos we would never call Atzeres. Why wouldn't we call Shavuos Atzeres? Because it has a mitzvah. What's the mitzvah of Shavuos? The Shtei Alechem. So we're not going to call it Atzeres. But in times of the mission, the Beis Mikdash was destroyed. Beis Mikdash was destroyed. There are no mitzvahs on Shavuos. There are no mitzvahs on Shavuos. It's also Atzeres. That's why Shavuos is called Atzeres. In the Mishnah, not in the Chumash. Says, says um, the Shevet Alevi like this. Every Yom Tif, yeah? Every Yom Tif has a mitzvah. Pesach, you have Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim, you have Maror, you have a lot of mitzvahs halayla. Sukkis, you have Yeshiva Basukah, you have Dalen Minim. What mitzvah is there on Shavuos? There are no, eight no mitzvahs on Shavuos. So it comes out a Cheese- tremendous cheesecake. It comes out a tremendous nafkamina l'halacha. You ready for the nafkamina? Says the uh, Rosh Alevi, when it comes to Leil Pesach, the woman can make a shechianu, and then when her husband comes home and makes a shechianu, she can answer Amen. You know why? Because Leil Pesach, when she says the shechianu, what's her kavana? Kavana is... Baruch Hashem, we reached the Yom Tif. She's not thinking about matzah. She's not thinking about marar. She's not thinking about tzibur She's thinking about the day. Mamela, when her husband comes home and says shachianu, that shachianu is more all-encompassing. It's not only going on the Yom Tif, it's going on all the mitzvahs halayla. Mamela, she could say amen because her husband's shachianu actually is accomplishing for her. It's going on other mitzvahs. 
Same thing the night of Sukkot. When she says the Shekhyonu and she lights the Neroys, the Shekhyonu is going on the Laila, going on the Yom Tif. When the husband comes home, his Shekhyonu could also go on the Mitzvah of Yeshiva B'Sukkah. Mamela, she could say Amen. But Shavuos, there's nothing, there's no mitzvah on Shavuos. The whole Shekhyonu that he's going to make is on the Yom Tif. She already made that Shekhyonu. So therefore, the Shevet Alevi Paskins, Lamaisa, very interestingly, the night of Pesach, she could answer Amen to her husband, Shechianu. The night of Sukkot, she could answer Amen to her husband, Shechianu. The night of Shuas, she's not allowed to answer Amen to her husband, Shechianu. Now, lots of luck telling her, you know, this Yom Tov, you could say Amen. That Yom Tov, you can't say Amen. That's where Rav Moshe Paskins, she could always answer Amen. Rav Shturmuch says it's always a hefsek. And the Shevet Alevi is machalik between Pesach Sukkot and Shavuot. I want to thank everybody for uh, giving me the opportunity to join you for the Shabbos, especially Ravi Hager, Ravi Weiss, and Bracha Vat Slacha, and Achat Kosh Sameach. This Torah class has been brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.